Hi everyone, welcome back to Project 2845. Since getting in our uh, parts and vacuum tubes to build our second gain stage and driver stage, I've gone ahead and actually prototyped or and started prototyping our second 6AH4 gain stage in our prototype chassis. So this uh, schematic shows our current the current circuit that's implemented in the prototype chassis. We've got our depletion mode MOSFETs up on top, act, uh, forming the active load for our 6AH4. Um, I actually have one of those, uh, here's one of the depletion mode MOSFET current source modules I built. Um, the top, at least in the schematic, the top um, transistor is the transistor attached to the heatsink, and the bottom one is uh, just floating or not attached to his heat sink here. And then we've got our trim potentiometer, which is here to adjust our bias. The reason the top transistor needs a heat sink is this, this, trans, this transistor or depletion mode MOSFET is doing all essentially all of the voltage dropping from our 500 volt supply to our required plate voltage. The voltage drop from drain to source of Q2 is minimal um, because the VGS is small as determined by the fixed resistance and our adjustable resistance in order to set the voltage drop to then control the current through the stack. So it doesn't need this, the Q2 is not dropping a lot of voltage, it's really just helping uh, maintain and set the current operating point. Up on the right here, this is our high voltage power supply that's in our uh, equipment rack. I have a hundred, uh, sorry, I've got a 1.5 K ohm isolation resistor, so we can isolate this power supply so it doesn't oscillate. Um, isolating it to our, or from our um, filter and local AC uh, capacitance for our 500 volt supply. So that 500 volt supply uh, is the high side supply for a depletion mode MOSFET and our 6AH4 gain stage. Based on the current required for our mu follower, I calculated an 8.2 K ohm dropping resistor and then another um, filtering capacitor for, to create a 400 volt supply for our mu follower. So this will help continue to clean up the supply as we go across the stack to more sensitive, uh, the more sensitive uh, stages which are closer uh, to the input compared to um, the second gain stage. Off of that 400 volt supply, there's a voltage divider and a filtering capacitor which forms our heater elevation. Now the 6AH4 and our 6SN7 mu follower uh, can be driven off the same heater supply and therefore uh, can share a heater, a common heater elevation. I will uh, uh, caveat this that I've actually uh, already experimented with a couple of values. Primarily, I've been playing around with this cathode resistor on the 6AH4 to, um, I guess, center the operating point of this tube for our 15 milliamp supply. So with a 1.5 K ohm cathode resistor, I get about 25 uh, volts of bias voltage across that resistor. And that corresponds to about 16.66 milliamps. So if I set my constant current source using the adjustment to this, to this uh, current level, with the 6AH4s I have on hand, uh, that seems to center the bias uh, quite well, which is a little bit um, different than I expected from the data sheet curves, and I'll, I'll show what uh, I anticipated for the data sheet in a minute. But you always have to play around with these things a little bit to get uh, get them to behave just right. But with a 1.5 K ohm cathode resistor, using both strong and weaker 6AH4 tubes, it didn't really matter. This operating point seemed to maximize our signal swing, which is exactly what we want to then couple that signal swing over to our driver. The other piece I'll touch on here before we go uh, take a look at the prototype chassis is we're gonna couple to our cathode follower driver from, or AC couple from the plate voltage. Um, or correct me, uh, I planned a DC couple, but for testing I use an AC uh, coupling capacitor to, to remove the DC plate voltage, and then I can just measure the resulting signal swing. And I'm actually using a voltage divider off of the AC coupling capacitor such that I can connect my AP without loading the output of the 6H4 and therefore loading the our nice flat load line uh, 
that we get from our uh, constant current source too badly. There is a caveat into doing that. Because the AP is only 100 kilo ohm uh, input impedance, this lower voltage divider, although it's ideally a 10 to 1 with a 1.8k on top and a 20k down low, the parallel combination of this 20k ohm resistor and this 100k ohm input impedance to the AP, that uh, parallel uh, equivalent resistance ends up reducing our voltage divider to not a for not a 10 to 1 or 0.1, but rather 0.0847. So basically, um, this voltage divider is a little less than 10 to 1 due to the loading of the AP. We actually do need to account that into our calculations. And so if we solve for what I called V actual, which is the output voltage that we'll actually use to our driver, we need to multiply the measured signal from the AP by 11.806 to get our actual output voltage. We can't measure that directly by connecting the AP here. We need to, we need to account for its impedance. Before we move to the prototype chassis, uh, there is one other thing I wanted to show, and that is how I was just figuring out um, the operating point for a maximum voltage swing. So I've already identified that I wanna try operating our constant current source for our second gain stage at two levels. 15 milliamps and 20 milliamps. And I wanna check and just see how the performance varies across these different operating points. And as we discussed previously in one of the other previous videos, I estimated that the constant current source requires 20 volts of headroom. And if you encroach on its headroom from our 500 volt supply, the current will, should fall off or will fall off very quickly. And so therefore for headroom, we need to stay away from that region. So if this 480 volt line is one bound of our maximum signal swing along our um, idealized high impedance constant current source load, the, the zero grid volt curve forms our other boundary in terms of where we can swing the signal. So for this lower 15 milliamp curve, what I did is I just calculated uh, the offset we need to shift the bias in order to maximize between this bound here, our zero signal grid curve, and our uh, headroom curve we need for the constant current source. And that math is just shown up here. But um, basically our grid curve, uh, we need 30 volts of headroom for a zero volt grid curve um, coming from the right side of the plate voltage curve. And then from the left side, we need, to, we need 20 volts of constant current source headroom. So that means we were basically shifting our operating point by 10 volts to the right, but for symmetrical swing, we have to divide that 10 volts by two. So actually we shift our bias instead of ideally 500 volts divided by two, it's 500 volts divided by two plus five. And then as you can probably guess here at our 20 milliamp um, operating point, it's uh, basically shifted by another five volts. So it'd be 260 volts in order to center bias our 20 milliamp operating point. So those that's what I've identified at least as our two um, starting places to try to maximize the signal swing. As we also discussed with constant current sources, um, and this is less of a uh, phenomenon or, or less of a consideration with this gain stage because it's gonna be loaded by our driver or cathode follower, which will present a really high impedance. But I did wanna document here that for each bias point, there's a critical load impedance where we can tolerate rotation of the load line before we run out of signal swing. And so for our 15 milliamp bias point, that critical uh, load we can drive is 15K ohms. And for our 20 milliamp, we can drive uh, down to a 10.9K ohm load. So a little bit of a steeper load line as we shift our operating current up using that constant current source. Again, not, not too much of an issue here, but it's worth noting the capabilities of this stage while we're discussing. The last thing I wanted to show real quick is this is just a uh, plate dissipation curve I made. So the 6AH4 is capable of 7.5 watts. And I calculated basically the uh, plate, allowable plate current for percentages of power dissipation relative to 7.5 watts. So 80% dissipation of this of the plate handling this tube is this lower curve here. 
And so this is helpful because I just want to ensure that under different operating conditions, my static bias point at around 250 volts doesn't exceed maybe 80% if we're trying to be a little bit conservative. But that's close to what I have identified as that 20 milliamp operating point, our higher operating point. So we are going to be driving this tube fairly hard, but it's static uh, resting bias condition is below uh, maximum plate dissipation by a bit of margin. So we should be okay there. So we're back with our prototype chassis. Um, I'm still using the same regulated filament supply, but now I'm providing the filaments for both our 6SN7 and 6AH4 preamp tubes. It's a little bit of a mess in the chassis trying to get everything to fit in, but it uh, works well. You can see I've got my constant current source module attached to the side of the chassis. So that's where I can adjust the, that trim potentiometer and, dress, and adjust our current through the 6AH4 second gain stage. But what I want to show here is how it performs with the audio precision. So the output is connected to our audio precision. Um, and actually I just ran a curve of its THD versus output voltage. So that output voltage on the x-axis looks rather low, but remember as we said per, per our previous analysis, that value needs to be multiplied by 11.806. And so I'll prove that to you here by first, I'll, I'll first I'll run that calculation. And then what I'll do is I'll connect, I'll connect this node rather than to the AP to, I've got a precision Tektronics digital multimeter. I've got two of them here that have 10 mega ohm input impedance. So we should have no loading effects if I connect one of those to here. And therefore we should get a perfect 10 to one divider per these resistors because the loading of the, the digital multimeter will be negligible. And then we can compare and see if this, uh, this calculation for the AP loading is correct. Um, so for example, here's what I'll run it at. Uh, I'll do one volt RMS input. And there you can see the output is 11.87 volts. So 11.87 multiplied by 11.806, which is our loading factor and voltage divider for the AP, we got 140 volts RMS. So if we want to see what the peak voltage is, we multiply that times the square root of 2, 198 volts peak signal swing. So this stage is doing really well, and in fact, this is well exceeding our required target based on our 845 operating point of um, 170 volts peak. And in fact, we can continue to push this stage a little bit more. And that's kind of what I wanted to show. On the oscilloscope screen in the back, I'm measuring on the, on the top curve here the output of our gain stage. So that would be this node here and the bottom curve is the input. So that's this is the output of the 6SN7 mu follower or the input to this gain stage. The top curve is the output of the gain stage. And so with one volt RMS, you can see um, the sine wave looks extremely clean. The distortion is predominantly second order. Um, if I increase to 1.1 volts, we continue to get more signal swing. If I, inc if I increase my input voltage to 1.2 volts, you can see here, we're now clipping on the high side. So as the input of our second gain stage goes negative, the output is clipping positive. If you follow the previous discussions on the headroom requirements of our constant current source, that's exactly what we're running to up here. This hard clipping is our constant current source running out of headroom when the input swing goes negative. Because the plate voltage goes high, we surpass that 100 and, uh, or sorry that 20 volt headroom requirement we estimated and we start to clip uh, the top of the waveform fairly hard.
So let me back down to 1.1 volts RMS. So 1.1 volt RMS input. Our output voltage is now 12.99 volts. Our harmonic distortion is 1.7%. So let's run that math with this. So we'll call it 13 volts times 11.806, 153 volts RMS times square root two, 217 volts peak. Multiply that by two to get our peak to peak. It's 434 volts of signal swing to peak to peak. That's about as much as we could ask for for a vacuum tube on a 500 volt supply. That's extremely good. And actually, this suggests with 217 volts peak on either side that we actually do have a little bit more headroom on our constant current source. Or, or we, we need a little less headroom on our constant current source than that 20 volts we estimated. So you can see it's still, the signal is still very clean. But if I increase it any more from here, we start to see clipping on the top. We, all, we also are getting into the grid current region for both the mu follower and our driver stage. The bottom, and it's hard to see here, is starting to round a little bit. And actually the THD versus output voltage waveforms show that a little bit better because you see kind of two break points at high output signals, one due to grid current and one due to the clipping of the cathode, or sorry, of the constant current source. So you can start to see a little wavering here, but it's, they're, they're pretty much right on top of each other. And so I was looking at a combination of this waveform and our oscilloscope to find the optimal center bias point. And so across multiple 6AH4s, as I discussed earlier, our optimal operating point was with a, for, for this, current range of approximately 15 milliamps, although to get it perfectly centered, it's 16.66, so close to our target. A 1.5 K ohm cathode resistor and 25 volts across the, uh, of bias voltage across the cathode. That really seems to be, for this operating point, our maximum signal swing. And that held true across a few different AH4s. And actually what I'll do in a minute is substitute in a weaker 6AH4, which has less THD performance, mind you, or worse THD performance, but the maximum signal swing available is pretty much identical to uh, this tube, which, is, which I'm running now, which is a particularly strong tube. For given cathode resistors, this shows the cathode load line. And so we, if we increase the current with a given resistor, we start shifting our bias voltage to the left and we move off center. So that's why as we increase the current, we actually have to then start changing our cathode resistor. So I didn't show this on screen, but I started with a 1.8 K ohm and to get it centered, the current was actually lower than I expected. So I immediately then jumped up to a 1.5 K ohm load or cathode resistor, and that got us close to my initial 15 milliamp target. What I eventually will try is a 1.2 K ohm resistor and trying close to somewhere around a, a, a 20 milliamp, sorry, a 20 milliamp bias point with a 1.2 K ohm resistor to put a little bit more current into the tube and potentially get a little bit more linearity.